Are you ready for a roller coaster ride of comedy and wit? Buckle up and don't miss this epic exploration of the most unforgettable moments in South Park history. Get ready to laugh, grasp, and be thoroughly entertained. You won't want to miss a second of it. Satin and Hell In television, movies, and other forms of popular culture, the figure of the Lord of the Underworld has been portrayed in a variety of different ways. God is in the midst of her. <laughs> she shall not be moved. <laughs> Despite this, Satin's depiction in SP is particularly funny, as it has been pretty much ever since his hilarious debut in the film, South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Thanks to you, Gary. Thanks for coming. Oh, bye, Martha. Jayden, a few of us are gonna go pound some brews. You wanna join us? On the one hand, he frequently carries out activities in a diabolical manner in which one might anticipate the devil to engage. On the other hand, on the majority of occasions, he behaves in a manner that is more typical of a fragile being who is an over their head. The juxtaposition of his demonic appearance and deep voice with this random, just your average guy demeanor creates an amusing dynamic in the situation. This was especially true during the period in which he had an unhealthy relationship with Saddam Hussein. It is not a surprise that many of the episodes starring him and his underworld, such as Hell on Earth 2006, are some of the funniest SB romps. Kyle and Stan's moral monologues. In monologues, it is unquestionably beneficial to have that counterbalance of morals and pathos. That is frequently communicated to the audience through Kyle and Stan, who at the conclusion of each episode frequently engage in dialogue like a sitcom sermon regarding the lessons they have learned. Remember kids, if you smoke, you could grow up to be a failure. Worse yet, you could grow up to be dead! On their own, these sage words of advice have the power to elicit a smile or two, particularly when they turn out to be startlingly accurate. However, on top of this, these monologues will occasionally become self-aware or satirizing, which makes them even funnier than they already are. It is quite obvious that Parker and Stone occasionally make fun of this cliche, as they frequently have humorous twists on themselves while they are parodying themselves. An illustration of this can be seen in the episode in which Kyle fully expects to be the one to ultimately explain the important takeaways from the story. To everyone's surprise, he unwillingly agrees to do it. But are John to tunes? Butters is considered by many viewers to be one of the show's main comedic focus points due to the endearingly pure and native nature of the character's behavior. He frequently serves as his friend, especially Cartman, who is known for his loudmouth behavior as a punching bag. Because of this, it is all the more fun when Butters is able to brush off these slides and keep a joyful, upbeat attitude, which he frequently communicates through goofy songs. Who's the boy that can laugh in a storm cloud, turn a frown into a smile for free? Who's the kid with a heart full of magic? Everyone knows it's Butters! Let me! These melodies from Butters provide lots of joyful smiles, from his snappy jingle for Benningen to his childlike songs about apples and robots. Visitors' sightings. The odd moaning aliens are frequently placed in the backgrounds of specific sequences by Parker and Stone as a humorous Easter egg as well as a subtly humorous comedy. These mysterious visitors have been a mainstay of South Park ever since they made their debut in the show's iconic pilot episode. Their fleeting appearances provide the experience with a fun little Where's Waldo style game, and makes no mistake about it, there are multiple episodes in which you can search for them. You might as well just say pilgrims and Indians were all aliens who came here and made some kind of intergalactic treaty. They have made dozens of appearances during the course of the show's lengthy run, in point of fact, even though they haven't been seen nearly as frequently in recent years, the fact that they occasionally do makes it all the more entertaining whenever one does make an appearance. It just so happens that a visitor made an appearance not too long ago in the Pandemic Special, in which one can be seen sprinting for a little while the riots in South Park are taking place. Chef Breaking Into Song The last Isaac Hayes provided his voice for South Park's resident school cook, and it was a perfect fit for the character. Despite the fact that he has been absent for a number of seasons at this point, Chef has maintained his status as a legendary SB character. His talent for impromptu singing is probably the quality that stands out the most about him. Say everybody ever seen my balls, they're big and salty and brown. If you ever need a quick, pick me up, just stick my balls in your mouth. Although they occasionally veer off the main road, these heartfelt songs are typically about the singer's desire to have encounters with people. One example of this is when he sings about his chocolate cookies. This SP cliche is used until right up to his very last appearance, which is where his musical numbers take an unexpected turn in the episode, The Return of Chef. Cartman is going home. 
The assertions of Cartman that screw you guys, I'm going home, are about to close to a catchphrase as this rogue has combined with his demands that others respect my authority. Cartman's propensity to abruptly give up in the middle of an important scenario by muttering screw it all and running away is a charming and hilarious trait that the character possesses. Eric, are you there? Yes, teacher, I'm here. I can't wait to start ski, ski, ski. This statement is an amusing way to show that Cartman is the one who is peeved there, to the point of completely quitting a scene. While he is typically the one to ruffle feathers and stare at the pot, this statement is an amusing way to convey that he is not the one who is doing so here. Oh my god, they killed Kenny. It is difficult to overestimate the legendary prominence of this charming SP callback because it has been around for so long. At least in the first several seasons of the show, the random death of poor Kenny McCormick functioned as a defining characteristic of the program. Oh my god, he's killing Kenny! You bastard! <laughs> to the point that the absence of such a death rendered an episode unsatisfactorily incomplete. The crass, irreverent, and anything goes attitude of the performance was exemplified by that moment. The hilarity of this running gag paradoxically comes in part from its overuse, but it also delivers laughs with the strange and absurd ways that Kenny is killed off from time to time. You spend way too much time with that girl. Oh my god, she killed Kenny! You bastard! These include getting blasted by laser eyes, run over by motorcycles, and even laughing himself to death as he approaches his aunt. Even though Parker and Stone no longer use this gag as much as they used to, they will occasionally pay homage to it in ways that are clever and understated. Kick the baby! The majority of the time, Kyle has a tendency to treat his younger brother Ike, who is Canadian, with thoughtfulness and consideration. Because of this, the unexpected moment in which he decides to punt him like a football is even funnier than it would have been otherwise. Hello there, my noble, strong fellow Canadian. If you are watching this film strip, then no doubt Canada is in grave danger. All of Canada is relying on you. This running humor occurs more frequently in SP's younger, more juvenile years than in recent history. Nevertheless, there is a particularly hilarious incidence of this bit in the seventh season's episode titled Cancelled. At the very beginning of this episode, which is a favorite among viewers, he uses his own brother to knock Cartman down to the ground. After that, he prepares to kick Ike, but his brother yells at him, just as he's about to do so. They took our jobs. SP is successful because it makes fun of society and various figures by using caricatures and concepts that are exaggerated to the extreme. One of the most consistently humorous imitations is that the irate rednecks, who are adamant about the fact that their jobs are going to be eliminated. And now these people from the future are showing up and offering to do the same work for next to nothing. They took our jobs! Well, yeah, the mysterious they seems to change depending on the episode, which makes the outburst by these individuals all the funnier. Randy's Goofy Antics It is not a coincidence that fans have pointed out that SP is becoming increasingly the Randy show in recent times, particularly with the current emphasis that has been placed on his Tegritary Farms project. In all seriousness, he is simply that funny, and he frequently acts as the primary source of humor in any given episode. Stan's thick and clumsy father has a habit of getting tied up in strange obsessions or getting himself involved in escapades that quickly get out of hand. Oh, hang on, sorry, uh, didn't somebody say the pandemic special was a bad idea? I wasn't saying you wouldn't make money, I was saying maybe that's not what should matter right now. His antics are constantly funny, whether it's because of his ambition to become a world-famous chef, his belief that receiving blessings from the Virgin Mary will cure his alcoholism, or his desire to create baseball worlds with his parents. That's all for the video today, we will be right back with more. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.